G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my December 2020 fish room update tour. The last update tour for the year. So let's get straight into the video and I'll show you around the room. So the first tank getting an update this month is this one and it is my Alto Land Prologus white calvis tank. These are my oldest and largest fry that I have. And at the moment they're pushing almost 1.5 inches. I haven't sold any of these guys purely because I'm finding it difficult to sell them. I want to keep them all. They look amazing in this tank. I love this tank. It's the first tank I come to when I come into the fish room and it is just mesmerizing to watch these guys swim around. When they swim around in the school, they just look awesome. Like, you know, I've just got my hand up above the tank. They think they're about to be fed and the way they move all in the same direction, even when they get scared, looks kind of cool. Them moving in a school uh, and all moving at the same time. I just love their unique shape, the striking patterns down the side of their body. Just, just a beautiful fish to watch. So the other thing I have done with this tank is that I've added some bristlenose catfish, some albino short fin bristlenose, added them to the tank yesterday and they have done an outstanding job on cleaning the glass of this tank. They've got some work to do on the slate, but they'll get that to that and in the next day or two, this tank will be spotless, no algae in it whatsoever from those guys. There's only three in the tank. They're all over an inch, almost an inch and a half long. So they are able to defend themselves against the calvus, but the calvus don't harass them too much. I will definitely not put long fin variety of bristlenose in any of my cichlid tanks, purely because the long flowing fins would attract the attention of the cichlids a little bit too much, and they would eat those fins off those bristlenose catfish, and that would be quite cruel. So I really don't recommend adding long fin bristlenose to your tanks, but short fin varieties are a lot better. But anyway, apart from that, I really don't have an update for, on this tank. I just wanted to show it off a little bit for you guys to enjoy and see what these guys look like when they swim in a, when in a massive school, how awesome they look. So this tank doesn't feature that much on my channel and that's basically because it's kind of a holding tank for fish that I intend to sell such as my Neal Emprologus Brevis Sunspot. I've got four large adult males in this tank and I've been intending to sell them for months. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. The other thing is it's got some adult calvus in here, some black calvus. That black calvus pair were in the tank that now houses my white calvus fry that you just saw. And the reason I moved the black calvus pair out was they started fighting and they were fighting for months. And to spread the aggression so that less dominant calvus wasn't getting bashed up as much, I put them in this tank so the aggression was spread out amongst more fish. That calvus wasn't the sole victim. So the aggression spread much more evenly now that they're in this tank with other fish. Secondly, they weren't doing anything. They weren't spawning. Uh, they looked like a bonded pair when I purchased them. One was smaller than the other. However, the smaller calvus grew to be the same size as the larger calvus. And I believe that that larger calvus now thinks that the initially smaller calvus is the same sex as it. So now they constantly fight. So they're in this tank. I don't intend to sell those guys. I intend to buy more black calvus, put them with these and hopefully breed them in the future. But the reason why I am showing you guys this tank today is because of my Judochromus transcriptus combi. Something really interesting happened that I didn't think would happen in this tank. And that is the uh, dominant fish in this tank, the dominant transcriptus combi, switched partners recently. So my uncle bred Transcriptus Gombi and he gave me four of his fry. I put them in this tank and a pair quickly formed. And that pair, they were the most dominant pair in the tank and they would keep the other fish away from their cave. Then two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago now, that largest fish, the largest Gombi I have, switched partners for the smallest Gombi in this tank. And I believe it did that purely because its, part, its previous partner had grown to almost be the same size as it. I believe some of these fish rely on size to distinguish the, the sexes, the different sexes. And to add further weight to that theory is the fact that they had never spawned that entire time. The other thing that makes me think that fish look at size for partners is my black calvus, like I just explained. They started off one smaller than the other and they look like a pair. They were defending their territory together. They always got along. Eventually that smaller calvus grew to be the same size as the larger calvus and then the fight started and now they constantly fight and they never spawn in that time either. So it's just the theory that I have. I'm not sure if it's true, but the fact that both of these pairs of fish paired up with the smaller fish and then never spawn and now both fight makes me think that the size does play a part in fish identifying the opposite sex. Now 
As you can see, the largest gombi is chasing the other two gombis away and it is paired up with that smallest gombi. I really hope to breed these guys soon because I really do like the pattern the Transcriptus gombi have and the highlighter blue fringing that they have on their fins is quite striking. Also, if I do spawn this new pair, that I think it will add a bit more weight to my theory that fish look at size difference for, to identify potential mates. So the next tank getting an update is my Judochromus Regani tank. An interesting thing with this tank is that now these guys have three generations of fry in the tank with them. At the foreground you can see 10 of their oldest fry and they're about an inch long now. There's also four fry that are around a centimetre long and right at the back of the tank where the parents are in the centre there are some newly hatched fry. Not sure how many there are yet, they're not free swimming yet, but I'm sure I'm going to see them in the next day or two. So the other interesting thing that I want to share with you guys is that I'm going to be releasing an in-depth species profile on Judochromus regani and how to breed them. It's going to be very detailed and it's going to contain a lot of interesting information I'm sure you guys will enjoy. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that video. It's coming out in the next month or so. I'm currently writing the script, I'm almost done and I still got to film a lot for that. So uh, yeah, just be sure to look out for that video soon because I promise you, you're going to really, really enjoy it. Anyway, on to the next tank. So out of all the tanks in my fish room, this is probably the one that most people want to hear about the most, and that's because it's got my Neolamprologus tetracephalus in it. These guys bred for me last week, and you're probably wondering what happened to the eggs, what happened to the fry, are they alive or are they dead? And to be honest with you guys, I don't know. Not enough days have passed yet for, for me to see the free swimming fry. The eggs aren't on the slate anymore, that's for sure, so I know they've hatched, and I think that the male has deposited the wriggling fry deep within the cave. He's still got his spawning colors on that, that's indicated by that dark horizontal bar that goes from his gill plate to his tail. And he vigorously defends that cave area. He's keeping all the other threats away. He sometimes lets the female near him, but uh, most of the time she's staying well away from him now. So hopefully the wriggling fry are deep within that cave structure and I will see them in the next two to three days. I know from when I've hatched Tret Fry in an egg tumbler before, it takes them about seven or eight days from the moment they hatch out of their egg to when they become free swimming, and there just hasn't been that enough time yet. So hopefully, I'm, well, I'm really hopeful that they're in the cave structure somewhere there. I just haven't seen any yet. And again, he, he, he stays in that area, so hopefully they are there, and I'll see them uh, in the next few days swimming around the male. So stay tuned for an update next week. So there you have it guys, my December 2020 fish room update tour. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.